Yes. <laughs> and he's run 340 in the 1500 meters. So great story here with James Moara in the race in a small field, but this field is looking to run 750. That's the world indoor standard yeah. for the 3000 meters. And we know that Hayward is fit, and we know that Ribich is fit. Ribich has also run four flat at altitude in Albuquerque for the mile this year. Yeah, and Ribich's PR is the fastest of the field at 750, which is right at that world standard. So um, as you mentioned, you, I think we've got four athletes that are set to finish this race, two U.S., um, one Great Britain, and one Germany. All of them are going to be wanting to get that world standard if they can and set themselves up for um, Serbia. And 31.05 for the first 200 meters, they're looking for 63 second quarters, so they're under that pace right now, off to a good start. We're still early on in this race, but uh, this is an intriguing matchup here. I'm really excited to see this because we know David Ribich, uh, he's a great personality in the sport, the Brooks Beast there. Uh, last year, I loved this race at the, at the Portland Track Festival. The man jumped in the 5,000 meters for I don't, I know that he had run it before, but it was, it might as well have been his first 5,000 meters. He's normally a 1,500 meter man. And he took Lopez Lemong, the champ, to the line. And he was, he was rigging like a madman out there down the final stretch, but he gave it everything he could. And he said that was the first race that he felt like he was beat as a pro and not that he lost. Ah, so it was a good outlook. There. I like that. That's a great way to describe it. But he's sitting on Jake Hayward now, who Ben Blankenship calls the silent assassin. <laughs> and he does his work. He gets in, gets out. I don't think his facial expression ever <laughs> changes. He's got a stiff upper lip, as the Brits say, coming out of Great Britain. <laughs> they are in a position going into, like, pace-wise, I should say. So they're coming up on 800 meters here. Yep. For 205, 204 high, 205 would be the split they were looking for, so that's right on pace. So they're looking at 412 through through 1600 meters here, so they're still under pace. Yeah. And the pack is working together. It's almost better in some regards to have a smaller field like this because you can keep your position yeah. and you know you don't have to fight anybody and for it. And the pacing is great. They're right, uh, right on pace from the gun. Everybody got right in line, could just relax and kind of settle into that rhythm. Um, and in these longer races to be able to get into that rhythm early and just not waste a lot of energy moving around, then that enables you to, you know, have a little bit of extra at the end and close hard. Yeah, so the pace pirate, Craig Nowak <laughs> up front, he does his workouts trying to hit his splits at double zero. Okay. <laughs> He said that uh, yesterday when he was doing 200s warming up on the track, he got 0.96 and 0.04, so. Impressive. Yeah, he's honing in on the mark. He is. But one of the most highly sought after pacers on the planet, he's, he's pacing right big on. races. Yep. <laughs> so, so they wanted 308, I think it was 307, 308.91. <laughs> all right, so they're, they're right there. Jake Hayward right behind. Uh, Craig Nowak, the pace pirate still, and then Dave Ribich there, the beast in the yellow, and James Moara trying not to let go of David Ribich. James Moara running for Pat Tyson in the legendary Gonzaga program out here in Spokane, who can now call this their home facility. Uh, he actually went to the same high school as Pat Tyson in Tacoma, Washington, so I think Tyson has a special place in his heart for Moara, and yeah. one of the biggest recruits that Gonzaga has ever picked up the kid ran 14 flat as a senior in high school for wow. 5,000 meters. Nice. So I know that there are a lot of Zags <laughs> that have showed up for this race to cheer on Moara yeah. out here. And coming in from Portland, coming in from Seattle to see this, I'm sure turning in on the broadcast. And it's fun, too. You can see the athletes who finished um, on the track cheering for each other. I saw Craig. I saw Coach Pete. Um, out there cheering the athletes on. I think, you know, one of the the, or the genesis of this meet or the kind of some of the concept behind it were these big friendlies that we were started during COVID and this attitude of, how, you know, can we make races where we can work together, where we can have across teams, people pushing each other um, and cheering each other on too. And uh, I just love to see this. I mean, this could not have been a better set up race from a pacing point of view. 
We're looking for 442 at 1,800 meters. They were 442 at 1,800 meters. And just 411.8 <laughs> at, at yeah. 1,600, and they were looking yeah. for 412. So they're right on. And right on. look at this rhythm, too. Like yeah. Hayward and Ribich are in lockstep yep. right now. <laughs> and Moara trying to hold on back there. Come yeah. on, big guy. Yeah. Get up there. Get on Ribich. Ribich wants you up there. He wants to pull you along to something special. You know he does. Oh, yeah. And he does just look completely composed, eyes down, sort of within himself as he gets himself a little bit further along before he can really start that final kick. And look at that Hayward there <laughs> itching his collar. <laughs> he's, he's itching to get going. Okay. <laughs> but in that 353 that he ran in Seattle, I, like I said, I don't think his facial expression ever changes. The man was breathing out of his nose running, it, running oh. a mile. And, <laughs> and now he is here, 3,000 meters. And Ribic starting to show some chinks in the armor. But we'll see if he can hang on as Hayward looks to tighten the screws here. 546 or so, um, so they're still right around pace. 800 meters to go. Mm -hmm. That was a 31-8. And now Hayward is getting some daylight here. And Ribich just needs to hold on here, but Moara likes the sight of that <laughs> because he's going to get a little bit of help. Yeah. But what's Hayward going to do? This is opening up. This is still this is still not his race to call yet. <laughs> But we have three laps to go coming up here. So we're looking for 616, 617, 618. So he's right around there. He's going to have to make up a couple seconds over the last uh, lap or two. But, um, I mean, he's looking great, looking strong. 617, 82, 619, 96 for Ribich as they're going into three laps to go. But now coming up. We're gonna, it's a quarter mile to go once Hayward crosses the line here. It's and always a fun time for an athlete when you get to that lap to go, um, or 400 to go, 200 to go. You're like, okay, all the things I was saving, I don't need to save anymore. And you can see that happening now. Yeah, and the fans <laughs> are making some noise out here as he's yeah. inside quarter mile to go. We're seeing yeah. some Hayward magic. <laughs> Maybe this is pre fun. Some track town magic. Some track town <laughs> magic. Some Hayward magic. This is Jake Hayward. Hayward H E Y W A R D. We'll call him Pre Fontaine, spelled P R I X. Yeah. And there's a lap to go. Seven eighteen. So he's he's made up the time he needed to make up. If he can just, I mean, he should be good for that world standard. The but Brit. Look, yep. It's his race right now down the back straight. We're looking for seven fifty. The crowd's giving him some love. Spokane becoming indoor track town. <laughs> the fastest track in the West. The podium. Here comes Jake Hayward Ish. down the final stretch. This uh, world standard should be well within his grasp. Oh, slowing up at the line okay, even. Okay. Jake Hayward he with, had it. <laughs> with some swagger. 748.84. And here we have Ribich coming in as well. And there's Moara, one, two, three, eight flat for David Ribich, 803 for James Moara, and a 748 victory for Jake Hayward Magic. Just cranking it down, looking so smooth, so strong.